A hundred and twenty-nine. O friends of the pure and omnipotent God, to be pure and holy in all things is an attribute of the consecrated soul and a necessary characteristic of the unenslaved mind. The best of perfections is immaculacy and the freeing of oneself from every defect. Once the individual is in every respect cleansed and purified, then will he become a focal center reflecting the manifest light. First in a human being's way of life must be purity, then freshness, cleanliness, and independence of spirit. First must the stream bed be cleansed, then may the sweet river waters be led into it. Chaste eyes enjoy the beatific vision of the Lord and know what this encounter meaneth. A pure sense inhaleth the fragrances that blow from the rose gardens of his grace. A burnished heart will mirror forth the comely face of truth. This is why, in holy scriptures, the counsels of heaven are likened to water, even as the Qur'an saith, and pure water send we down from heaven. And the gospel, except a man be baptized of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Thus is it clear that the teachings which come from God are heavenly outpourings of grace. They are rain showers of divine mercy, and they cleanse the human heart. My meaning is this, that in every aspect of life, purity and holiness, cleanliness and refinement, exalt the human condition and further the development of man's inner reality. Even in the physical realm, cleanliness will conduce to spirituality, as the holy writings clearly state. And although bodily cleanliness is a physical thing, it hath nevertheless a powerful influence on the life of the spirit. It is even as a voice wondrously sweet or a melody played. Although sounds are but vibrations in the air which affect the ear's auditory nerve, and these vibrations are but chance phenomena carried along through the air, even so, see how they move the heart. A wondrous melody is wings for the spirit and maketh the soul to tremble for joy. The purport is that physical cleanliness doth also exert its effect upon the human soul. Observe how pleasing is cleanliness in the sight of God, and how specifically it is emphasized in the holy books of the prophets. For the scriptures forbid the eating or the use of any unclean thing. Some of these prohibitions were absolute and binding upon all, and whoso transgressed the given law was abhorred of God and anathematized by the believers. Such, for example, were things categorically forbidden, the perpetration of which was accounted a most grievous sin, among them actions so loathsome that it is shameful even to speak their name. But there are other forbidden things which do not cause immediate harm and the injurious effects of which are only gradually produced. Such acts are also repugnant to the Lord and blameworthy in his sight and repellent. The absolute unlawfulness of these, however, hath not been expressly set forth in the text, but their avoidance is necessary to purity, cleanliness, the preservation of health and freedom from addiction. Among these latter is smoking tobacco, which is dirty, smelly, offensive, an evil habit, and one the harmfulness of which gradually becometh apparent to all. Every qualified physician hath ruled, and this hath also been proven by tests, that one of the components of tobacco is a deadly poison and that the smoker is vulnerable to many and various diseases. 
This is why smoking has been plainly set forth as repugnant from the standpoint of hygiene. The Barb, at the outset of his mission, explicitly prohibited tobacco, and the friends one and all abandoned its use. But since those were times when dissimulation was permitted, and every individual who abstained from smoking was exposed to harassment, abuse, and even death, the friends, in order not to advertise their beliefs, would smoke. Later on, the Book of Akdas was revealed, and since smoking tobacco was not specifically forbidden there, the believers did not give it up. The Blessed Beauty, however, always expressed repugnance for it, and although in the early days there were reasons why he would smoke a little tobacco, in time he completely renounced it, and those sanctified souls who followed him in all things also abandoned its use. My meaning is that in the sight of God, smoking tobacco is deprecated, abhorrent, filthy in the extreme, and, albeit by degrees, highly injurious to health. It is also a waste of money and time, and maketh the user a prey to a noxious addiction. To those who stand firm in the covenant, this habit is therefore censured, both by reason and experience and renouncing it will bring relief and peace of mind to all men. Furthermore, this will make it possible to have a fresh mouth and unstained fingers and hair that is free of a foul and repellent smell. On receipt of this missive, the friends will surely, by whatever means, and even over a period of time, forsake this pernicious habit. Such is my hope. As to opium, it is foul and accursed. God protect us from the punishment he inflicteth on the user. According to the explicit text of the Most Holy Book, it is forbidden and its use is utterly condemned. Reason showeth that smoking opium is a kind of insanity, and experience attesteth that the user is completely cut off from the human kingdom. May God protect all against the perpetration of an act so hideous as this, an act which layeth in ruins the very foundation of what it is to be human, and which causeth the user to be dispossessed for ever and ever. For opium fasteneth on the soul, so that the user's conscience dieth, his mind is blotted away, his perceptions are eroded, it turneth the living into the dead. It quencheth the natural heat. No greater harm can be conceived than that which opium inflicteth. Fortunate are they who never even speak the name of it. Then think, how wretched is the user. O ye lovers of God, in this, the cycle of Almighty God, violence and force constraint and oppression are one and all condemned. It is, however, mandatory that the use of opium be prevented by any means whatsoever, that perchance the human race may be delivered from this most powerful of plagues, and otherwise woe and misery to whoso falleth short of his duty to his Lord. O Divine Providence, bestow Thou in all things purity and cleanliness upon the people of Baha. Grant that they may be freed from all defilement and released from all addictions. Save them from committing any repugnant act. Unbind them from the chains of every evil habit, that they may live pure and free, wholesome and cleanly, worthy to serve at Thy sacred threshold, and fit to be related to their Lord. Deliver them from intoxicating drinks and tobacco. Save them, rescue them from this opium that bringeth on madness. Suffer them to enjoy the sweet savours of holiness, that they may drink deep of the mystic cup of heavenly love, and know the rapture 
of being drawn ever closer unto the realm of the all-glorious. For it is even as thou hast said, all that thou hast in thy cellar will not appease the thirst of my love. Bring me, O cup-bearer, of the wine of the Spirit, a cup full as the sea. O ye God's loved ones, experience hath shown how greatly the renouncing of smoking, of intoxicating drink, and of opium conduceth to health and vigour, to the expansion and keenness of the mind, and to bodily strength. There is today a people who strictly avoid tobacco, intoxicating liquor, and opium. This people is far and away superior to the others, for strength and physical courage, for health, beauty, and comeliness. A single one of their men can stand up to ten men of another tribe. This hath been proved true of the entire people. That is, member for member, each individual of this community is in every respect superior to the individuals of other communities. Make ye then a mighty effort that the purity and sanctity which above all else are cherished by Abdu'l-Bahá shall distinguish the people of Bahá, that in every kind of excellence the people of God shall surpass all other human beings, that both outwardly and inwardly they shall prove superior to the rest, that for purity, immaculacy, refinement and the preservation of health they shall be leaders in the vanguard of those who know, and that by their freedom from enslavement, their knowledge, their self-control, they shall be the first among the pure, the free and the wise.